GameSide.com. GameSide.com. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Professor Chris Ferguson, and welcome to Regular Expressions, also known as RegX, where string slash data pattern matching occurs. Here's the big picture. Search this large text file to the right. See these dot, dot, dots? This could be a very large file. Let's say it's multi gigabytes. Let's search that file. There's two scenarios that we're searching for. Number one, does 10 slash 27 slash 23, does that match a date pattern? If we're looking for all the dates in this data, does it match true or false? Scenario number two, return a list of items that match the email pattern. All right, if you look very carefully, you see an at sign there, an at sign there, an at sign there. We're searching for a pattern that matches the email format. Give me a list of all those emails. Regular expressions are a sequence of commands that specify a search pattern. It is important in the fields of data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, or AI. Regex can locate or verify data without an exact match are perfectly formatted data. Regex works with many programming languages. Regular expressions. Search using patterns like mm slash dd slash yy. This is the pattern in my mind that represents a date and you could see it, that pattern matches. Or username at some domain name. Pretty much every time I see an at sign, I think, well, is that an email address? What regex allows us to do is set up these patterns to spot things like email addresses. Here we have an area code in parentheses, then a prefix, and then a number. That's a telephone number. Find me something in this data that matches that pattern, and there's a good chance it might be a telephone number. Regex patterns are more abstract than these examples, but the idea is the same. These are my own patterns that I look for. Regex is a formal syntax for specifying patterns. The human brain is very good at looking at the data on the right and spotting the patterns and recognizing what is a phone number or a date or an email. Our brain makes a connection even if the format is not exactly what we expect. As I'm looking at this data, I see a phone number, then a date, then an email, then a date. Maybe I'm not even familiar with this date format, but boy, as soon as I see June in 1944, I'm thinking that's a date. Here's another email and then another phone number, an email. You look at that at sign and that's the first thing you think, well, is that an email address? The idea of a regular expression is to do the same thing. You describe the pattern and it finds the data that matches the pattern. With the pattern mm-dd slash yyyy, the four y's is a four digit decimal number for the year. In regex, that pattern would be slash d slash d slash d slash d. That is four decimal digits. Other ways to do it in regex are bracket zero to nine end a bracket with a four that says give me four numeric digits or slash d curly brace four n and that's one of the problems with regex there is often more than one way to do it and all four of these regex patterns do the exact same thing find me four contiguous decimal digits to master regex, you need to learn the small language needed to build these patterns. What is a slash D? What is a slash S? What do the curly braces mean? Once you learn a small set of special characters, you can do regex. There is a regex learning curve. First, you have to learn the special characters like dot, question mark, dash, plus, asterisk, curly braces, parentheses. You have to learn the special characters that you build the patterns out of. Second, you assemble the special characters into short expressions like slash D plus sign or period curly brace 8 comma 16 and a curly brace. Here's a pattern. It says it starts with a capital T and then choose an A, an I, or an O and then end it with an M. That is a pattern. It could be Tam, it could be Tim, it could be Tom. 
The third thing you do is you build full regex patterns like this one for a date. This is one or two decimal digits, followed by a slash or a dash, followed by one or two decimal digits, followed by a slash or a dash, followed by two decimal digits. You take these special characters and you build these patterns. And when you compare it against the data, uh, you might match something like this one right here. This date right there matches that regex pattern. Now, a big mistake that beginners make is starting with step three. They start with this large pattern and you try to break that up. Uh, a lot of the videos I saw on YouTube, they show you these gigantic regex patterns and then try and explain the whole thing. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to start with the small pieces. I'm going to say, hey, look at this little piece here and tell me what it means. And then once you know what the small pieces do, you assemble them into bigger patterns. So slash D slash D question mark. That is one or two numeric digits. Bang. Uh, it would match a 10, for instance. Then square brackets slash dash end of square brackets. That means I want to match a slash or a minus sign or a dash. Slash D curly brace one comma two and a curly brace. That is the pattern for one or two decimal digits. Could be one digit, could be two digits. Again, we have a slash or a dash. And then finally we end with two decimal digits. This is a regex pattern. We break our larger pattern into these short expressions. Then you have to understand what does a question mark mean? What does the square brackets mean? What do the curly braces mean? And this larger pattern will match things like 10 matches this pattern. The slash, of course, matches that pattern. The 27 matches this pattern right here. And the 23 matches this pattern here on the end. This date matches this pattern right there. Down here, I put some extra spaces here. Those spaces do not occur in the pattern. They're there so I can kind of break it up and show you the pieces. I found that I did not get good at regex until I learned to break the larger patterns into smaller pieces. And that's what I'm doing on this line. I'm breaking it up into smaller pieces. So these spaces don't belong in the pattern. They're there to illustrate the, how I broke up the pattern. Look at 9-3-04. Does that match the pattern? I think it does. Remember, this is one or two decimal digits. And that matches that nine right there. There's my dash, matches that dash right there. Working left to right, regex patterns work left to right. Uh, the three, does the three right here match this pattern right there? And it sure does. The pattern says, give me a decimal digit, one or two of those decimal digits, and that matches that three. Then our dash right here is a match right there. And finally, the two decimal digits right there match. Some even strange things can match. Uh, regex, depending on how you do it, can be too permissive where it matches too much, or it cannot be permissive enough where it doesn't match enough patterns. Uh, it will match this pattern as a date. 3 slash 25 dash 21. Since this is an or symbol, I can have a slash or a dash. And up here, the slash will match. And over here, the dash will match. This turns out to be a match for our simple date pattern up here. And even sort of things that probably doesn't work at all. The 99-99-99. Technically, it matches the pattern. Uh, it's not a good date. There's no month 99. There's no day 99. Uh, that's something we have to check using something else. Uh, but it does follow the pattern. Phew. So that's what we got to do. We got to learn how to build these larger patterns out of smaller pieces, which are composed of these special characters. So let's write a small piece of code and see how regex works with it. We're going to import the Python regular expression module. Regex is supported across many different programming languages, including Python, JavaScript, and Perl, Java, etc. This is a good thing. Most of this slide will try to be language independent, uh, but this line here is specific to Python for sure. 
you import the RE, or regular expression module, in Python in order to use it. It's needed at the top of your code before you can use a regular expression. Some languages, like JavaScript, this is automatic. You don't have to import anything. Python, you have to import the RE module. Data equals quote dot 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 end of quote. This is going to be the data we want to search. The core of regex is you want to find a pattern within some data you wish to search. This data could be every post made on Facebook, a list of every Google search made in the past 24 hours, every message sent on WhatsApp. This data is just a big chunk of data that we want to search. Data science is the analysis of large sets of data. Any of the above companies wants to know how many of their users is also using TikTok. Regex can be used to extract how many mentions of TikTok exist in a large data set like the variable data. So data is just a big chunk of data that we want to search. Again, it could be every post made on Facebook. It could be every Google search somebody has made. It's a big chunk of data that we want to search. Pattern equals double quote TikTok and a double quote. This is the pattern we will search for in the data. The easiest regex pattern is simple literal characters. I literally want to search for uppercase T, lowercase IK, uppercase T, lowercase OK. Search for these exact characters in the data and report back to me if you found it. This will search data for the exact letters tick tock with uppercase T's in left to right order. When I read the pattern, I always read them left to right. Find this T and then an I followed by a K and so on. Now it will find tick tock, but it will not match tick space talk. It won't match tick tock with lowercase T's. It won't match tick tock with uppercase letters. There's a whole class of things that maybe should match, but this pattern won't match. If you really want all mentions of TikTok, you want close matches also. That is what regex excels at. The patterns below all expand the match so the users do not have to spell TikTok perfectly. So we'll do it first with give me all the perfect matches for TikTok. And then in these lower patterns, we'll say, oh, well, how can we make it a little more flexible so it finds anything that's close to TikTok? Result equals re.search, pass it the pattern, TikTok, and the data we want to search. This is Python specific. Other languages are similar, but not the same. Other languages might call this function find. In Python, result is a list of matches for the pattern in the variable data or the value none if it didn't find any matches, but only exact matches for the pattern TikTok spelled with uppercase T's. Below this line are several alternative patterns that will expand what matches. They show the power of regex, which allows one search to find exact and close matches. Again, if you're doing a marketing study and you're looking at a bunch of data and you're seeing, well, Who's using TikTok or who's mentioning TikTok in their posts? Well, if you expect people to spell words perfectly every time, you're going to be greatly disappointed. I've graded many a student pages and many of you are into what I call creative spelling. You just don't get the spelling right. And that's what regex is good at. It says pick this spelling or maybe this slightly different spelling or even this third or fourth version of the way it's spelled and match those also. The original pattern where you use literal letters, you have to have exact matches. As we go down these examples below, we'll see how we don't have to have perfect matches. Pattern equals tick period talk. To really learn patterns, you need to learn a set of special characters that expand what will match. The period or dot is a wild card that says match any character in the world. With this pattern, the search above it, this line of code right here, will find tick space talk, or tick at talk, or tick a talk, or tick for talk. This dot in the pattern says, I will match any possible character that you can put between these two words. 
So the space, the at, the a, and the four all match this dot pattern. Oddly, it doesn't match TikTok without anything in between tick and tock because the A means there must be one matching characters between the tick and the tock. So if I put this in the pattern, the dot, and I run it through this search method, it's only going to find something with something in between the tick and the tock. Pattern equals tick backslash D tock. Remember, read the patterns left to right. Literal characters, T-I-K, and then a slash D, which is a numeric digit. The backslash D is an escape special character that matches any numeric digit, zero to nine. With this pattern, the search above would find tick one talk. It would find tick three talk. It would find tick five talk, tick eight talk. Any number between tick and talk will be a match for this pattern. Now, it will not match tick talk with nothing in between it, or tick space talk, or tick 99 talk. Backslash D means one numeric digit, one character, zero through nine. The backslash is used a lot in regex to modify how the character that it follows is treated. So backslash D is not two characters, it is one numeric digit, and exactly one numeric digit between the tick and tock will match. Pattern equals tick backslash w tock. The backslash w is an escape special character that says match a word character, lower a through lower z, big A through big Z, or zero through nine. Hmm. With this pattern, the search will find tick B talk, or tick uppercase B talk, or tick 5 talk, or tick uppercase L talk. Any character between the tick and talk, that is what we call a word character, will match. What it will not match is tick talk without any spaces. There has to be some sort of letter between the tick and the talk. Tick space talk won't match this either, and tick add talk will not match it. So it'll match a lot of different things, but not these three specific items. The backslash W is not two characters. It matches one uppercase, lowercase, or numeric digit only. Uh, this is not a good pattern for this search. I was just trying to illustrate the difference between the backslash D and the backslash W and, and kind of represent that each of them, backslash D and backslash W, is one special character one letter. All of these patterns that I'm doing are meant to run through something like this re.search. What if I provided this pattern to executing that command? What would happen? The backslash s is an escape special character that matches any white space, a space, a tab, a new line character. With this pattern, the search above will find tick space talk, but strangely not tick talk without a space. The next pattern will make both match. The backslash S again is not two characters. It matches one single space or one single tab or one new line character in between the words tick and talk. These four patterns are kind of related. The dot says, I don't care what character you put between the tick and talk as long as there's a character. This is saying I want a numeric digit between the tick and talk. This says I want a word character between the tick talk. And this says I want some sort of white space character. All right, I'm going to add something new to this one, and it's simply this question mark. The question mark is new. It's called a quantifier that says match zero or one backslash s space characters. The space is now optional. With this pattern, the search would find TikTok without a space. It would find TikTok with a space. It would find TikTok with a tab in between the tick and the talk. Now the pattern is getting close. If we were searching for every mention of TikTok, most important, we'd want to match something with a space in between it or without a space in between it. Uh, the other thing to understand about this pattern is there's basically three pieces to the pattern. First are the literal characters tick, T-I-K. Then the backslash S question mark is a special character that will appear zero or one time. 
zero or one time. This question mark is attached to the backslash S and saying, hey, put a space there or don't put a space there. I'll match it either way. And finally, the third part is the literal characters talk. Again, read these patterns left to right. And when you get good at it, you can kind of break the pattern into its subcomponent. Pattern equals tick backslash s plus talk. The plus is a quantifier that says match one or more backslash s space characters. That means there could be one, two, five, or even more spaces between the tick talk. With this pattern, the search above finds tick space talk, tick talk with three spaces in between it, tick talk with five spaces in between it. This one's not great. Um, because it doesn't match TikTok without a space. Remember, this is one or more spaces. So if someone spells TikTok with no spaces, then it's not going to match this pattern. Understand what will match and what won't match. Pattern equals tick backslash s asterisk talk. The asterisk is a quantifier that says match zero or more backslash s characters. There could be none or two or five or more spaces. With this pattern, the search finds tick talk without a space. It finds tick space talk. It finds tick and five spaces and talk. Now it's a toss up whether we want to use backslash S and question mark in our pattern or backslash S and asterisk. Uh, I can't tell you which one's better. It's kind of a judgment call. I would probably go with the single space in between tick and talk. But if you're really looking for all references to tick talk, so somebody puts two spaces between tick and talk. Do you want it to match? You better use that asterisk. If you only want one space or zero spaces to match, then you use the question mark. Ooh, here's an improvement to our pattern. In front of our pattern, we're going to use a parenthesis, question mark, I, and a parenthesis. The parentheses, question mark, I, and the parentheses makes the match case insensitive. With this pattern, the search above finds tick talk or tick lowercase talk or tick with a big K talk, right? It really doesn't matter what character's uppercase or lowercase, it'll match it. And again, that's kind of what you want. If you're looking at, you know, who's talking about tick talk online, you want to match every upper lowercase combination. That's the whole point of using regex. You can have one search that finds the exact matches and matches that are close enough. With data science, this is especially important with user data, which is never in the exact formatting or spelling you expect. If this is data that people type in, expect many different spellings of TikTok. If I had to search for all mentions of TikTok in a large data set, this is the pattern I'd probably use. Pattern equals slash tick backslash s question mark talk slash i. For the most part, regular expressions work the same between programming languages, but there are some differences. In Python, we tend to put our patterns in double quotes in JavaScript you put them in forward slashes. See these forward slashes? That is a JavaScript requirement. We don't have to worry about it in Python, but if you're programming in JavaScript, expect to see the pattern in forward slashes. The two big differences is Python puts regex patterns in quotes and JavaScript puts them in forward slashes. Python also uses the parentheses question mark I and the parentheses for case insensitive and JavaScript will hang an I here off the end. See this I at the end of the pattern? It says match upper and lowercase versions of the literal characters. Slightly different, but not a whole lot different. It shouldn't, it shouldn't bother you too much. However, the online tools, the websites that help you with regular expressions are almost all written in JavaScript. So you better understand the JavaScript format if you're going to use the online tools. Phew. All right. So the key to understanding regex is the ability to break a complex expression into simpler pieces. If you look at this 
I don't know, medium sized pattern here. You've got to be able to break this into its components, into its pieces. The first piece here is the case insensitive piece. The parentheses, question mark, I, end of parentheses. That says I want this whole pattern to be case insensitive. So this uppercase T or lowercase T, it doesn't matter. Lowercase K or uppercase K doesn't matter. If you're case insensitive, you don't care what's uppercase and lowercase. And this here will make the whole pattern case insensitive. So tick will match tick because it's a literal. Then the next piece is backslash S question mark. That says zero or one spaces between the tick and the talk. And finally, another literal TOK. It will only match TOK. The first thing I do when I'm looking at a regular expression is I divide it into its subparts. If you look at this pattern right here, it breaks down into four separate pieces. If you understand the individual pieces, then you understand the whole pattern. Now, I keep saying the word pattern a lot because it matters. That's what regular expressions are. It's pattern matching. Here's another place where regex is used a lot. In e-commerce, regex often verifies the data input on a web page. Now, here's just kind of a, a fake web page that's going to collect some data from the user. We want their phone number, their birthday, and their email. And before we process this user data, we'd kind of like to know if there's a real phone number here, a real birthday here, and a real email address there. Never ever trust what users type. They will type it wrong. Make sure the data is good before it's stored in a database. Do not accept 123 as a phone number or ABC as a birthday. It's not the way regex works. Regex will tell you if this data in that text field matches the email pattern. Regular expressions are a sequence of commands that specify a search pattern. In addition to data science, regex is a valuable tool for web commerce. On the front end in JavaScript, regex is used before the input is accepted. On the back end, Python, regex verifies the data before it's written to a database. Regular expressions, aka regex. Let's look for a date format, something that follows the mm slash dd slash yy pattern. Much of the data users entered on a web form follows clear patterns. When you think about a phone number, in parentheses, we have an area code, then a prefix, a dash, and then the number. Does the thing input to this field match the phone number pattern? A date, mm slash dd slash yy. Again, this is sort of my pattern, not the regex pattern. Does the date input into this field on my web page match that pattern, true or false? If it doesn't match the date pattern, don't accept that input. Username at some domain name, right? One of the first things you check on an email address to verify whether it's good or not is does it have an at sign in the middle? And other things follow patterns too. Zip codes can have five numeric digits, then a dash, and then four numeric digits. Credit card numbers are sequences of four digits, four digits, four digits, four digits. Now, pound sign is not a regex pattern. We'll show you the regex pattern very, very shortly. Uh, but it's basically a credit card number is 16 digits, usually in groups of four. What we're gonna do is we're gonna learn the regex to verify patterns for things like phone number, birthdays. Vast amounts of data is collected by Google, Facebook, Amazon automatically when we use our phone or computer. Data science uses regex in the analysis of that information. Frankly, most of it is done to sell you something. They look at your search history, your text messages, and post to determine what you'll buy. Send a text message to your friend saying, I'm going to the car dealer to look at cars, and boom, you'll start to see car ads on your phone, on your Facebook. Regular expressions are also used when you enter the data to complete an online purchase. Do not even bother to submit an order to a server unless required fields like credit card number, which is 16 numeric digits, and expiration date, which is usually just a month and a year, follow the proper regex pattern. The oldest saying in computer science is called garbage in, garbage out. 
verify the card number is at least reasonable before you submit the transaction. Why even try to process an order if the user hasn't entered something into the credit card field? Check data once, check it twice, check it three times. Make sure the data that the user enters is good. And I said before, there is a regex learning curve. First, you have to learn the set of special characters. The dot is a wild card that matches everything. Question mark means I want zero or one occurrences. Uh, curly braces are the quantifiers or the size of the thing I want backslash D is a numeric digit, you have to learn the special characters in order to understand regular expressions. Once you learn the special characters, you assemble short expressions like backslash D plus or dot curly brace eight comma 16 and a curly brace or uppercase T parentheses A or I or O and a parentheses M. That'll match Tam, Tim or Tom. The third thing you do when learning regular expressions is you build full regex patterns like this one for a date. The big mistake everyone makes is starting with step three. They start with the large pattern. What you really want to do is learn the small pieces first. Now I notice this on a lot of the YouTube videos. They'll show you this big old honking regular expression and try and explain the whole thing. No, no, no. Don't learn regular expressions from big ones. Learn small regular expressions, then assemble them into bigger pattern. So if I were to take this pattern right here and split it up into its individual components, backslash D, backslash D, question mark, means I want to match one or two numeric digits at the start. Then the slash or dash means I don't care whether you put a slash between the month and the day or a dash between the month and the day, I'll take either one. Anything in these square brackets is a match. Backslash D curly brace one comma two. This is just another way to write one or two decimal digits. Following that, we have a slash or a dash. As long as I have a slash or a dash between the parts of my date, I'm happy. Finally, for the year, we decided to go with two decimal digits. Understand the question mark, square brackets, and curly brace and what they mean then you can build regular expressions. Now I do want to stress that this date pattern that I did here is not perfect. It's a decent date pattern. It will match things like this and this and even that. However, it does match 99-99-99, which technically matches this pattern, but we know this is not a valid month or day in a date field. So let's see if we can improve the date pattern. We'll import our E import the Python regular expression module. Regex is supported across many different programming languages like Python, JavaScript, Perl, Java, etc. And that's a very, very good thing. Most of this slide will be on language independent. I'll try and use patterns that work on all languages, uh, but certainly this import statement is Python specific and it's needed at the top of your Python code before you can use regex. My date equals order form dot date dot value. This is pseudocode. This is not real code. Uh, this is assigning a text string that should be in the format mm slash dd slash yy to the variable my date. So I'm just grabbing some data out of a variable and storing it here in this local my date. This is what the user typed into the input box for the date on a web page. So if the user typed in 10 slash 23 slash 22, or 04 slash 17 slash 23, regex should return true saying that is a valid date. However, if in that date field they typed in something like ABCD or Bob at Y.com, regex should return a false and say the data from the date field is wrong. I don't want to accept it. Remember garbage in, garbage out? If someone puts this into a date field, you do not want to store it in your database in the date field. Important to make sure data is valid before storing it in large data sets. Here's the pattern, backslash D, backslash D, forward slash, backslash D, backslash D, forward slash, backslash D, backslash D. The pattern we will search for in my date. 
reading the pattern left to right, you'll see backslash D backslash D is two numeric digits, the MM. This could be zero three or one zero. The slash that follows is kind of hard to see, but it's there. See that slash there? That is the literal forward slash character, the slash that appears after the MM. Then we see a backslash D backslash D again. That's two more numeric digits, the DD, and that adds a 25 or a 19 to the date. Again, we're processing this thing left to right. So two numbers, a slash, two numbers, a slash, and two numbers is what we're looking for. This backslash D and the backslash D is the two more digits for the year. So something like 02 slash 15 slash 21 will match as a pattern for the date. Forward slash warning. Some versions of regex place the pattern in forward slashes. In this case, you must use the backslash character in front of the forward slash. So if I have to use forward slashes, like in JavaScript, when you use the forward slash inside of it, do a backslash forward slash, a backslash forward slash. And that'll let you use forward slashes in your regex expression. Result equals re dot match, pass it pattern and my date. This is Python specific. Other languages are similar, but not the same. Other languages might use a method named find. Python uses match or search. In Python, comma, result can be used as a true false value. Where this is true is when my date matches the pattern like 1023 slash 22 or 04 slash 03 slash 17. When it's false is when it doesn't match the pattern. If you took this data and asked if it matched that pattern, it come back and say false, it doesn't match. And these numbers, they're far too big for the month and the day. This will return, I can't find a match. Now there is a problem. This pattern does not work for things like 2 slash 23 slash 20 or 10 slash 1 slash 06. It doesn't handle single digits month and day. Each pattern below is an improvement over the previous one, expanding which user input the regex will accept as a valid date. Pattern equals backslash D backslash D question mark. Let's make one of those D's optional. Backslash D curly brace, one comma two and a curly brace. One or two decimal digits. And finally at the end, we're just two decimal digits. The pattern we'll search for in my date, reading the pattern from left to right, you'll see the backslash D backslash D question mark. It says I want one or two numeric digits, the MM the three or the five or the 10. All of those will be acceptable values at the beginning of the pattern. Then we have a literal forward slash. Boom, we gotta have a forward slash in the date pattern, at least this date pattern. Then you see a backslash D curly brace one comma two. It's another way to do the same thing we were doing right there. Uh, it's one or two numeric digits. Uh, pretty much the same thing as the backslash D, backslash D question mark. Next up, you'll see some curly braces in our pattern. What are curly braces? They're quantifiers. How many characters do you want to match? Uh, in this case, we're saying I want to match one backslash D or two backslash Ds. It doesn't really matter to the pattern. Uh, it's just looking for one or two decimal digits. We see another forward slash in this pattern right there. Are we separating the month and the year and the day by slashes, forward slashes? Finally, the backslash D with the two and curly braces is exactly two YY year digits. Now, I thought about doing a one digit year, but it's too ambiguous. If you put a one there, are we talking about literally year one? Are we talking about year 01? So I said, force the user to input two decimal digits at the end of the day. Again, I'm not looking for the perfect pattern here. I'm looking for a pattern you can read and understand, and then you can move on to do more sophisticated patterns that can do a little bit better on the error checking.
Now, one problem with this particular pattern that we're looking at right here only accepts forward slashes. What if someone inputs their date 3-14-22? Uh, that pattern won't work for that date. So we're going to look and see how we can do it, either with a slash or with a dash. A better pattern to search for in my data. The new piece here is a square bracket slash dash end of square bracket instead of just a plain slash. Anything inside square brackets is called a character set and it means I want to match one character and it could be a slash or a dash, I don't care. Now with this improvement to our date pattern, we'll accept 2 slash 25 12. We'll accept 9 dash 3 dash 9. We'll accept 12 slash 1, 5 slash 2, 0. It'll accept a lot more different, maybe funky ways that people write dates. If it matches a pattern, we're going to consider it a good date. If it doesn't match the pattern, we'll consider it a bad date. Now, another way to see what the square brackets means is look at this pattern. T in square brackets, A, I, O, and the square brackets, M. Now, this will match TAM because this one letter A is the only thing I'm looking for between the T and the M, or Tim, because it'll take one single I from this pattern and match it with the T and the M, and same thing for Tom, all right? The idea behind regex is data does not always appear in the exact format we prefer, and a good pattern allows for your code to handle the differences. Next up, let's add a four-digit year to the pattern. Ooh, pattern equals and a lot of this stuff we've seen, but at the end, I'm going to do a parentheses backslash D4 or backslash D curly braces 2. This is saying I will take a four-digit number or a two-digit number for the year, and I really don't care which one it is. So the square brackets say pick one letter within the square brackets. The parentheses say pick one pattern within the parentheses. Coding challenge. Write a Python program without regex to verify the date string that covers all these variations. Could take 20, could take 100 lines of code. Yes, there is a learning curve to regex. It takes time to understand all the special characters, building expressions, and creating larger programs. But once you do master regex, the code to find slash verify data is short and sweet. Plus, you can Google regex date or you can google regex email and modify the patterns you find online just about every regex pattern i've ever done is i google it first and then i find something similar to what i want to do copy paste it and change it to get it up and running google is your friend pattern is a variable that contains a regular expression i'm going to call match and if it returns the equivalent of true i'm going to say hey that matches our date and if match doesn't like it, then we're going to return a none, and this will execute. That's a bad date format. Oldest saying in computer science, garbage in, garbage out. Always check the data input to make sure it's good before you store it in your database. So Google Python RE module. Read the first couple of links on there and understand what is in the RE module. What we're going to do is compare the pattern to a string value in the variable my date. In this case, my date only contains a small string and we want to know true or false, does it match the pattern? When we want to scan a large amount of text looking for all date patterns, I usually call re.search or re.findall and it will return a list of the date patterns it finds in the text. If I'm just kind of comparing one small piece of data, I call match. I'll put when the string in the variable my date matches the pattern so this date should match the pattern and it should execute this code. All four of these dates, notice how we don't care whether there's a slash or a dash between them. Notice how we don't care whether there's a two digit or a four digit year. We'll just take what they have, store it on our database if it matches our pattern. If it doesn't, don't store it in your database. I output the bad date message only when the string in the variable my date does not match the pattern. Now I did a couple of bad dates. I did a two slash 25 dash one. 
That one doesn't match this second half of the pattern. That's the last half of the pattern. It says after the last slash, there should be four or two digits. I don't care which, but you can't get away with one digit for the year. Another bad date, 129 slash 152. Oh, that's, that's this rule right up here. We're not matching the one or two numbers. Finally, another bad date, 6 space 17 space 2023. 20, now that's probably a good date. If you look at it, that's June 17th. But my pattern, see the square brackets? My pattern is insisting that a slash or a dash appear between the two. When re.match returns none, the else clause will execute. What if we wanted to accept a dot or a space between the flights? Just modify the pattern. Tweak this pattern and you can refine what matches. Phew! So, there is a regex learning curve. I've said that three times now, but it's true. The first thing you gotta do with regex is learn the special characters like dot, question mark, plus, curly braces. The second thing you have to do is learn to assemble short expressions like backslash d plus or dot curly brace 8 comma 12 and a curly or even capital t a or i or o lowercase m that is a pattern find tam find tim find tom i don't care which one just match one of those three the third thing you got to learn when doing regular expressions is you got to build full regex patterns you got to take the little pieces that you now understand and build them into large patterns that will match what you're looking for. When I look at this pattern right here, I can break this into pieces here and here. Break it up. A lot easier to understand the small regex patterns and then assemble them into big problems. But it's worth it. Regular expressions are language independent, mostly. There are a few little glitches here and there that they're different. Uh, so they work in JavaScript, Java, Perl, etc. Whew, that's it. I uh, hope you understand more about regular expressions. Go on and continue the lesson on regular expressions to get good at them. We'll see you on the flip side.